Time for chapter five. This is getting exciting. Dr. Zimer arrived while we were still staring at the thing in the nest. He jumped out of his car and came running out to us in the backyard. He was wearing a red bathrobe over his pajamas and he looked pretty excited. He ran up to the nest and looked in. His eyes opened up wide and he knelt down on the ground and stared and stared and stared. After a long while, he said softly, that's it, by George, that's just what it is. Then he stared for another long time and finally he shook his head and said, it can't be true, but there it is. He got up off his knees and looked around at us. His eyes were just sparkling, he was so excited. He put his hand on my shoulder and I could feel he was quivering. An amazing things happened, he said in a kind of whisper. I don't know how to account for it. It must be some sort of freak biological mix-up that might happen once in a thousand years. But what is it? I asked. Dr. Zimer turned and pointed a trembling finger at the nest. Believe it or not, you people have hatched out a dinosaur. We just looked at him. Sounds incredible, I know, he said, and I can't explain it, but there it is. I've seen too many Triceratops skulls to be mistaken about this one. But, but how could it be a dinosaur? Pop asked. Goodness gracious, Mom spluttered. And right here in our backyard? It doesn't seem hardly right. And on a Sunday, too. Cynthia was pretty interested by now and kept peeking into the nest and making faces, the way she did when Pop brought a bowl of frog legs into the kitchen one time. I guess girls just naturally don't like crawly things too much. To tell the truth, I don't either sometimes. But this thing that had just hatched out looked kind of cute to me. Maybe that was because I had taken care of the egg so long. I felt as if the little dinosaur was almost one of the family. We stood around for a long while looking at the strange new thing on the nest, trying to let the idea soak in that we had a dinosaur. After Dr. Zimer calmed down a little, he and Pop tightened up the chicken wire to make sure the little animal wasn't going to crawl out. Dr. Zimer watched the poor old hen for a time, and then he wondered if perhaps she ought not to be taken out before she went out of her mind. Pop figured that it might be a good idea, and he picked her up and put her outside the pen. She acted a little dazed at first, but pretty soon she followed the other hens and began scratching for worms like the rest of them. I've never seen such a surprised hen in my life, Dr. Zimer said. Mom suddenly began to notice how we all looked. Cynthia, you're still in your pajamas, she said. You get right into the house and get dressed. Walt, you've only shaved half your face. My goodness, the neighbors will think we're crazy. And we haven't had breakfast yet. What am I thinking of? Dr. Zimer, won't you stay and have breakfast with us? Dr. Zimer said, why, yes, thank you very much. And then he happened to look at his bathrobe. But I'm not dressed myself. Oh, that's all right, Pop told him. This is no time to worry about clothes. We always wear bathrobes when our dinosaurs hatch. Dr. Zimer laughed, and we all went back in the house. Mom got a big breakfast, and we all tucked into the bacon and eggs and hot biscuits and honey as if we'd been starving. Afterwards, Dr. Zimer leaned back and patted his stomach. I haven't had a breakfast like this in years, he said. Those biscuits are worth coming miles for, Mrs. Twitchell. You probably don't have a chance to eat a decent meal without being interrupted, Mom said to him. A doctor's life must be terribly hard with emergency calls all the time and day of the night. Dr. Zimer looked at her sort of surprised. You know, he said, I think you've got me in the wrong profession. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a paleontologist. My patients have all been dead for 50 million years or so. I saw him wink at Pop. Cynthia's mouth dropped open. 50 million, she said. Say, what is a paleo, paleon, well, whatever it is you just said. Dr. Zimer looked at me. Do you know, Nate? Well, no, I said. Not exactly. I could hear Cynthia snicker at me. A paleontologist is someone who is interested in very ancient life, Dr. Zimer said. 
he goes around trying to find old bones and fossil remains of plants and animals so he can know what kinds of things lived long ago. Actually, I should call myself a paleozoologist because I'm particularly interested in animal life, like dinosaurs, for example. That was why I was very anxious to see what came out of this egg of Nate's. Well, I never, Mom said. So that's why you thought that the egg might hatch out. Oh, I certainly hoped it would, anyway, Dr. Zymer said. You see, all we've had to work on so far is fossils, just bones, teeth, footprints, and so forth. Naturally, we haven't been able to be sure about many things because up to today, nobody has ever seen a live dinosaur. As a matter of fact, no one was even sure that dinosaurs hatched out of eggs until Roy Chapman Andrews found some dinosaur eggs in the Gobi Desert in 1923. So you see, this dinosaur in your backyard here is tremendously important and scientists all over the world are going to be grateful to Nate and his family for taking care of such a valuable egg. Dr. Zymer had been talking so much that he had forgotten about the biscuit he held in his hand, but now he broke it open and put a dab of butter on it. He looked around the kitchen and frowned a little. This is such a nice peaceful place, you know, but now the trouble begins. When the news gets around, the scientific world is going to go crazy. I'm afraid it may change things quite a bit around here. Science has done an enormous amount of good for the human race, but it rarely makes things any more peaceful. When I send a telegram to my colleagues at the National Museum saying that I have seen a live Triceratops, they're going to take the first plane out of Washington. If they believe me, that is. Then there will be an official announcement to the press, and right after that there will be crowds of scientists and other inquisitive people from all over, and there will be a big hullabaloo. It will make you quite it will make your quiet little backyard look like Union Station. People will be coming and going, and stepping in your flower beds and leaving cigarette wrappers all around. I hate to upset your lives here that way. Well, now, do we have to tell anybody that we've got this dinosaur? Mom said. I don't see why it's anybody's business but our own. Dr. Zymer smiled and shook his head. They'd find out anyway, Mrs. Twitchell, whether we told them or not. And besides, I owe it to my colleagues to tell them about anything I discover. I expect them to do the same for me. We scientists don't like to keep secrets from each other. We're just not made that way. We could send it away to a museum or a zoo, Cynthia said. Then all those crowds of paleo people could hang around the museum and then they wouldn't bother us at all. Dr. Zymer looked around at me. How about it, Nate? Would you let your dinosaur go to a museum? I could take him to the National Museum in Washington, where I work. I would promise to take the very best care of him. But I wouldn't get to see him then, I said. I don't think I'd like that too much. I'm not a scientist, but I'm kind of interested in him, too. You don't get a chance to have a dinosaur of your very own very often, you know. Well, I can't say I blame you, Nate, Dr. Zymer said. But I really feel that I have to tell the other scientists about this. What will you do? I tell you what, Pop said. I think Nate's got the right to keep the dinosaur if he went to all the trouble to hatch it out. And I guess the doctor has a responsibility to tell the world what he knows. So it looks as if Dr. Zymer had better go ahead and send his telegram, and the rest of us will brace ourselves for the shock as best we can. Maybe we can figure out some way to work it so that we won't be completely swamped. Now, let me see, Dr. Dimer, Zymer said, rubbing his chin. How would this be? We could make some rules about visiting hours, say from 8 in the morning until supper time, or whatever you like, and then let just a few people at a time to avoid crowding. Then there's the telephone. I don't know what you could do about that. That can be an awful nuisance if it rings all day and night. Oh, Mrs. Beebe can take care of that, Mom said. She can tell them to wait until morning if they call at night. She's very good at that. And I could answer the phone in the daytime, Cynthia said. I could be a kind of secretary. It would be fun. When the phone rang, I'd pick up the receiver and say, Good morning. This is Mr. Twitchell's residence. And then I'd write down their names and all that. And it would, be very, it would be a very good experience for me, wouldn't it, Mom? And I could be the keeper, I said. I would say, step this way, ladies and gentlemen. 
Watch out for the petunias there, sir. This is the only living tra er, t only living dinosaur in the world, and only known a living dinosaur, Nate, Dr. Zimmer said. We must be scientific about this, of course. He turned to Cynthia. All right, then, young lady, here's your first job. Got a pencil and paper? She grabbed the pencil and a pad from the telephone box and sat down again. All set, Dr. Zimmer said. I'd like you to send this wire collect to Alfred Kennedy, United States National Museum, Washington, D.C. He waited until Cynthia wrote this down and then said, Have day old triceratops alive. Come quick. Signed, Zimmer. He could see Cynthia was having quite a bit of trouble with triceratops, so he spelled that out for her. Then he leaned back and chuckled to himself. I wish I could see Kennedy's face when he reads that. Well, I must go back and get dressed. We'll probably have a few hours before things start popping. I'll come back after dinner, Nate, and we'll work up some sort of pen that that animal of yours and we can give him a little food. Thank you all very much for the breakfast. When he had gone, Mom began bustling around. Hurry up, Cynthia, and send off that telegram. Then while you're doing the dishes, I'll straighten up upstairs. Nate, you better go out and milk the goat, and then get washed and put on your good suit. We've only got three quarters of an hour before church. Oh, do we have to go to church today, Mom? I said. I've got an awful lot to do for that dinosaur before people start coming to look at it. I should think we could skip church just this once when such an important thing has happened. Dr. Zimmer said the scientific world's going to go crazy, didn't he? Never mind that, Mom said. There's no reason to give up going to church just because we've got a dinosaur out back. Get a move on, now.